continue to close large opportunities since we worked together. Um, but you know, this this opportunity alone, I mean, I haven't calculated it, but I mean, I mean, we're probably talking a thousand to one. What I got more out of our experience together was learning how you think. And I think that's where a lot of people that are investing in personal development kind of get it wrong, is they're looking for these, these hacks. And really what you're, you're paying for is just somebody else's perspective. And I think getting your perspective on how you look at problems and how you solve problems and, um, and you know, how you work with customers, that's had the biggest impact on me. Mm -hmm. and, and so that does dovetail into the pen issue. Um, so I, I don't know how it came up during our initial conversations, but I think I told you that, you know, the amount of money to work with you was a lot of money to me. Because heck, I even have a um, you know a fountain pen in my Amazon wish list that I haven't pulled the trigger on, and that was you know I don't know fifty or a hundred bucks. And you you use that as a teaching moment um, to you know really say you know it's that attitude that you have about money and what you think is a lot of money. That's why you're not closing bigger deals because you you know you accept those types of stalls and objections from your prospects instead of understanding you know why that's an issue um, and you know it basically your your issues with money you project that on your your prospects mm -hmm. um, and and so, you know, that's just an example of kind of understanding like how you looked at that problem um, and, and helped me, you know, kind of work through it. And fast forward, um, I, you know, now I'm actually a, a novice fountain pen collector. Um, mm -hmm. I went to uh, my first fountain pen show um, last year and was buying like all these vintage fountain pens and um, things like that. I, so that's a, a whole nother, I guess, weird story. But, you know, the, the fountain pen story is a good one because it showed that, you know, this thing in my personal life, how it was affecting my abilities as a salesperson and my professional one. Recognizing it. Um, and then the, you know, the effect that it was potentially having on me was um, the biggest thing. Um, and I think we even had an exercise where you just said, you know, go buy the freaking pen. You know, why is it, it's this, you know, $50 thing that's been on your wish list for how long? Like, is your family going to starve if you buy that pen? Um, and I know that's a very specific example, um, but, you know, we, so before we worked together, I did that assessment, that third party assessment through objective management group, and it pointed out um, a lot of those things. Um, you know, another one was like need for approval. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, we did some specific exercises where, you know, maybe my response to prospects both in meetings and through emails were things that kind of put me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, you know, a little more assertive than maybe I would have been in the past. And the result was no one died. Um, and in, in a lot of cases, you know, it, it helped progress things along. Um, right. So I think what was helpful for me was to get that third party perspective of, kind of these personality traits or whatever that I had um, and understanding like what the potential negative implications of those could be and then systematically figuring out ways that I could work on those um, individually, whether it was, you know, um, being a little bit more assertive in, you know, the way I, I handled a situation, 
you know, buying, uh, you know, an ink pen. Um, you know, there was other kind of small things that, um, you know, didn't always relate to like the deals I was working on. Right. But it was, it was helping me kind of work through some of those behaviors and patterns, which are the really the toughest things I think to fix. Right. I mean, anybody can read a script, um, and you know, have a new voicemail or you know new cold call approach but i think fixing like long ingrained behaviors that you know have probably been developed through time all the way from childhood that's that's the toughest thing to do and i think number one um you know, most sales reps are probably thinking, you know, they're just chasing the next hack or the tip or the, the trick. Um, and, and then most of us probably don't realize what our, like, gaps are. Um, what are the true areas that we need to improve on? Like, if you would have asked me that in the beginning, I say, well, I need help closing, right? That's probably what I would have told you. When, when actually, um, where I really needed the help was in these uh, other behaviors that were impacting the way I was going through kind of the qualification, disqualification stage. You know, not being willing to look at a potential opportunity was going to waste a ton of time and be willing to walk away from that early on. Um, or, you know... Uh, qualifying the cost of consequences of doing nothing early um, so that we don't get into a situation, you know, months down the road where we've all invested a ton of time and they decide to do nothing. Um, so I think getting better in the front of the process um, versus, you know, hoping and praying at the end of it, um, it is a big thing. And, and, and so I think most sales reps don't realize that about themselves because they're inherently biased about what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and if you're, you know, an internal, um, like if you're a sales manager, you're biased because you've hired these people and you want, that, you want it to work out. And sometimes you may want it to work out more than they want it to work out. Yeah. Um, so I think having that third-party perspective to kind of see what you're not seeing, um, you know, could be, could be hugely, hugely beneficial.